Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss Skoken. We are in Chapter 3 of our geometry course now, Parallel and Perpendicular Lines. We are going to start by looking at our objectives. And the first one is identify parallel, perpendicular, and skew lines. The second one is identify the angles formed by two lines and a transversal. We are seeing some new vocabulary this time, and some of it is familiar. Parallel lines, perpendicular lines, skew lines, parallel planes, transversal corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and same side interior angles. Now for our warm-up, blank points that lie in the same plane. That is clearly, if they lie in the same plane, they have to be coplanar points. The next one is blank two angles whose sum is 180 degrees, and we remember that supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. The next one says blank is the intersection of two distinct lines, intersecting lines, and we know that two lines intersect at exactly one point. And number four, blank is a pair of adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays. Non-common sides are opposite rays. So that clearly is describing a linear pair. This brings us to the three identical cubes that we have down at the bottom of the page. And we're going to look at each one of these separately. We're doing it separately because otherwise it's going to get too crowded on one diagram. So we're going to split it up and look at things separately. Let's take a look. The first thing it says is parallel lines. And you see the symbol for parallel lines is right here. Are coplanar and do not intersect list two pairs of parallel lines. So we look at our diagram and we can see that line EF and line AB are parallel to each other and this is indicated by these little arrow symbols saying that they go the same direction or they are placed at the same angle. So one of our pairs of parallel lines is line EF with line AB. Next we want to look at a second pair of parallel lines on that same diagram and we notice that line EG is parallel to line FH. Again this is indicated now we have a double arrow going in the same direction, indicating to us that these are also parallel. So that means that line EG is parallel to line FH. Let's move on to the second cube and the second statement. This one is talking about perpendicular lines and it says, and you can see the symbol for perpendicular right here. It says perpendicular lines intersect at 90 degree angles. We're going to list two pair of perpendicular lines. So our first one that we're going to list is line EF, and we're going to say that that one is perpendicular to line FH. Both of those lines are on the front of the cube. Now we're going to move to the back of the cube, and we're going to pick two more perpendicular lines. So we can see that line AC is perpendicular to line CD. And we're going to write that as line AC is perpendicular to line CD. Let's move on to the third cube and the third statement. This one is saying skew lines are not coplanar, are not parallel, and do not intersect. So if I choose line EG to be one of my skew lines, it cannot be one that intersects with it nor can it be one that's parallel to it. It's actually got to be on a different plane. And so, for example, line DH is skew to line EG. Last of all, and staying on that third cube, we come to the statement that parallel planes are planes that do not intersect. And we can think of this plane on the top of the cube 
as one of the planes, and it does not intersect with the plane on the bottom of the cube. So remember that in order to define a cube, we need three non-collinear points. So we're going to say that plane GHD is parallel to plane ABF. Both planes are defined with three non-collinear points. Okay, let's take a look at example number one, and it says identifying types of lines and planes. I'm going to recommend that you turn the video off and you try to identify these on your own, and then you can turn the video back on. I will talk you through them. The first thing that we want to do is identify a pair of parallel segments, and we can see that segment KN is parallel to segment PS. Remember the symbol for segment and remember the symbol for parallel. Next we want a pair of skew segments. So remember they cannot be parallel, they cannot be perpendicular, they cannot intersect. I'm going to choose segment KL as one of my segments and skew to that one would be segment NS. We don't have a special symbol for skew like we do for parallel and for perpendicular so we're just going to list both of them with the word and between. Next we want a pair of perpendicular segments and we're going to choose segments MR and it has to be perpendicular and intersecting so I'm going to choose segment RQ. Remember the symbol for perpendicular. And remember that we can name a segment in either order so we can call it RQ or QR. Last of all, we need a pair of parallel planes, and I'm going to choose the plane on the left of this solid and the plane on the right. And remember that we're going to name these planes with three non-collinear points, so I'm going to call them plane K and S, and whoops, is parallel to plane L, M, R. The next section again has three identical images and what we're going to do is we're going to figure out some new definitions. So you can see the image on the left says we've got two lines and these lines are not parallel but that we do have two lines and then we have this other line going through them right here at an angle. So this line that is going through the other two lines is called a transversal. And a transversal is a line that intersects two coplanar lines at two different points. And when we are asked to list a transversal, we just identified line T as a transversal. Just a reminder that we can see eight different angles are formed by the three lines R, S, and T, and they are numbered. The angles are numbered one through eight in our image. Now we have a new term, and it's called corresponding angles. Corresponding angles lie on the same side of the transversal, and what that is saying is if we are on that second image, and if we're in the upper left, upper left corresponds with upper left. If we have lower right, that corresponds to lower right, and so on. So when we're asked to list four pairs of corresponding angles, we know one of the pairs is angle 3 and angle 7. Another pair is angle 1 and angle 5. Another pair of corresponding angles are 2 and angle 6. And they are both in the position of upper right, upper right. And then the last one that we're going to list is the pair four, angle 4 and angle 8. We would classify those as lower right and lower right. Okay, so those are corresponding angles. 
Another new term is alternate interior angles, and these are angles that are not adjacent that lie on opposite sides of the transversal between the other two lines. So again, alternate interior angles lie on opposite sides of the transversal and lie on the interior, which is between the two other lines. So examples of opposite interior angles are 4 and 5 and 3 and 6. We also have a relationship called alternate exterior angles. Those are going to lie on the exterior of the two lines through which the transversal goes, and they're going to be on opposite sides of the transversal. So for example, angles 1 and 8. They are one pair of the alternate exterior angles. Another pair, you can see, are angles 2 and 7. Last of all, we're going to identify something called same side interior angles. And those are going to lie on the interior, but these are going to be on the same side as the as each other. So angles 3 and 5 and angles 4 and 6 are same side interior angles. We have learned a lot of new vocabulary here and we need to know where each of these is each of these different types of angles is in relation to each other. So we're going to look at example number 2 and practice these new definitions. Okay, on example number two, we want to be able to classify pairs of angles, and I am going to try to color them in as we go so you can see what's what. Let's start with the corresponding angles. Corresponding angles, if you remember, are in the same position. So if we're going to say upper left with upper left, or lower right with lower right, and so on. Although we can choose a few different ones, I'm going to choose angles four and eight for my corresponding angles and they are in that lower left position of the transversal and the other two lines. When we talk about alternate interior angles, remember they need to be on the interior of the two lines that the transversal is going through, and I'm going to choose angles three and five. They are on opposite sides of the transversal and they are in the interior of those two lines. So angles three and five. Next we want alternate exterior angles. So they need to be on the exterior of the two lines. I'm going to choose angles one and seven. That's not the only pair of alternate exterior angles. There is another pair, but those are the, it's, it's going to get too crowded on our diagram, so that's why I'm choosing those. And then we want same side interior angles. So they need to be on the interior and they need to be on the same side. So I'm going to choose angles 3 and 6. On example 3, we don't have the traditional two lines and the transversal going through them. We still do have two lines and a transversal going through them, but what we need to do is identify we have three lines, L, M, and N, and one of them is always going to be the transversal. So when we look at angles 1 and 5, which is the transversal, and when we look at it this way, we see that angle angles 1 and 5 have both are made with line N. And what that means is line N then is the transversal because it is the line that goes through the other two lines to create angles 1 and 5. So when we look at it that way, angles 1 and 5 are going to be alternate interior angles and the transversal is line N. Okay, let's now take a look at angles 3 and 6. 
when we shade in angles 3 and 6, which line goes through both of those or is used to create both of those? And you might see that it is line M. So the transversal is line M. And because these two angles, 3 and 6, end up in the same position, the lower left position, they are corresponding angles. And you may have noticed that there are some abbreviations we're going to be able to use for alternate interior, ALT dot, INT dot. For angles, this is one angle. If we have multiple angles, it's a little angle symbol with the S inside of it. Let's now take a look at angles 1 and 4. Let's erase what we've got going on here. And we are going to highlight angles 1 and 4. Okay, so which of the lines is used to create both of those angles? And yes, you guessed it was line L. That means that L is our transversal. Oops, I have a spelling error here. Transversal is line L. And what is the relationship of these two angles when we recognize L as the transversal? And you are correct, they are alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles. Okay, so that is it for this lesson. This, and of course, that means it's time to get to work on your practice problems.